Welcome to the Friday edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode 423. I'm Kevin Coulson. And I'm George Conger. Today's July 27th, 2018. He is alive! I know. I put up a quick post last week saying, pray for George. He's in the hospital. He might be having a heart attack, a blood clot amputations who knows what's going on uh kind of panicked the world but we got the prayer chain started and uh boy lo and behold you weren't having a heart attack you weren't having a blood clot uh but you certainly were in distress uh bring us a little bit up today what happened and how are you feeling today well i've been feeling overtired ever since i got back from jerusalem and mm -hmm. i thought it's just being an old man and doing a lot of walking sure well a week ago t tuesday now uh, Susan was up in Tennessee at Swanee with my daughter, taking her to a conference. Mm -hmm. And I woke up Tuesday morning and I couldn't get out of bed and I was shivering and I took myself to the doctor and I had 103 fever and uh, he sent me straight to the ER and they checked me for a heart attack, for deep vein thrombosis in my legs, for a stroke. And they eventually came back with blood poisoning or sepsis. And so I was in the hospital from Tuesday to Friday night on IV antibiotics. They've not identified what the agent or infection is. Uh, I've got another doctor appointment this afternoon. Maybe we'll get a little bit closer. But at one point, my white blood cells, they basically said, you either have leukemia or you are really, 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 really <laughs> sick. Well, it's come down considerably, but I'm still not out of the woods. Mm, geez. So, uh, well, let but it's great having delirium and uh, uh, you know fevers, and I mean, I was I couldn't read, I couldn't watch TV. All I could do, actually, all I could do is I could just remember some of the Book of Common Prayer. You know, I've been doing it sure. every Sunday for 20 years, so these things I sort of memorize it after a while. And I found a great deal of confidence just repeating the uh, prayers from the prayer book, and the anthems and the, the creeds. And it sort of self-hypnotized myself into uh, relaxation in a very difficult night. No, well, I, and I remember the first text I got from you after all this was over last Friday. Oh, feeling better now. Let's tape. Yeah. No, no, no. Well, basically I have about maybe an hour or two of energy in a day sure and I feel great everything's live powerful I've got 50,000 million things I need to get caught up on and then I hit the wall uh. and that wall when it hits it's not depression or anxiety in other words I don't oh woe is me life is terrible nothing like that but rather it's like being in like a fly in amber or in glue you know it's just like the synapses are not firing and I can't basically do anything other than sit and stare. Basically, I go over and sit at my parents' house. We're all the same level of cognitive abilities. <laughs> they take out your Duracells, huh? Um, well, let's thank everybody who prayed. We really appreciate everybody on Facebook uh, who prayed for George and who reached out. Uh, I'm sure uh, the, the bishop's office here is from Facebook before anybody else uh, that uh, George is, uh, is sick. Well, the... <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the funny thing is, these IV antibiotics, they mm -hmm. kill everything. So that means the normal healthy bi at, b protections I have, none of them will work. Uh -oh. So I've picked up colds from people. Uh, my intestinal systems don't work. I don't know if people want to hear this stuff, but man, just don't get old. Don't get <laughs> sick. Don't get old. <laughs> <laughs> that's the problem with you know modern medicine is that they're keeping us older longer they have spare parts now my other co-host gavin got a new hip uh, last week and or two weeks ago he's doing great and um it, it's amazing that we're keeping going uh i used to have type 2 diabetes that's finally gone um you know modern medicine is wonderful um so let's talk a little bit about news but before we do that uh i now have an official form that i print off I want you to like the episode. I need you to share this wonderful episode. Do it before you watch it. Uh, comment if you want in the comments on, on YouTube. Lots of people are doing that. Uh, if you notice you're not getting the email blast we used to send out, 
We don't do that anymore because Gmail and Yahoo and everybody else uh, blocks us every other week and it's just become too much a hassle. So we ask people to subscribe. Now you can subscribe on YouTube. You click the little red button there. Or if you want to subscribe to the new podcast that we have. Uh, in the show notes for every uh, video now, we have how you can subscribe and get the podcast. Let's move on to the news. We have a, uh, a wonderful person who is going to be a Canadian bishop and uh, he got squashed. He's now in the in the depths of hot Texas, George. Poor Jake Worley's had to go on from northern British Columbia down to Fort Worth, Texas. So he's gone from 10 months of snow to 10 months of heat and humidity. Uh, Jake Worley was, is one of the most appalling cases of hypocrisy in the Anglican Church of Canada. And that is saying yeah, that's, something. That's amazing. <laughs> the Jake the standard was, is very uh, high for that. Jake Worley uh, came out of the Episcopal Church, Diocese of the Rio Grande. He joined the ACNA, AMIA, as it was then, and the ACNA. Then he served in Ireland. Then he went up to Canada, was a parish priest, and he was lawfully, duly elected bishop of uh, the diocese up there, Caledonia. Well, the archbishops of the province vetoed him on theological grounds. He might potentially leave the Anglican Church of Canada and take his diocese with him. And so just so that there's no question and no trouble, we're going to blackball him. And not only did they blackball him, that the Archbishop of the province came in and fired him, removed his license to be a priest, a parish priest in the diocese. Um, this was just evil, just plain evil. And the Anglican Church of Canada, which is in free fall, you people could say, oh, the Episcopal Church is just about dead. Folks, it is live and kicking and healthy compared to the Canadian church. Well, the Canadians don't publish their numbers anymore. They haven't because they're so bad. Mm -hmm. Really, they're so bad. That, and there are few pockets of inherited wealth like Toronto, but the Anglican Church of Canada is in very deep, deep difficulties. In fact, they just had another ACNA retired bishop, Terry Buckle, former Archbishop of the Yukon in British Columbia, not that the Archbishop did all the bad stuff. He just joined, uh, uh, here's the illness coming in, folks, right. Charlie Masters. That's right, yep. Charlie Masters <laughs> in Anik, which is the Canadian uh, section point. of ACNA. Yep. But Jake Worley basically is, is ha you know, basically has to leave Canada because he doesn't have a work permit. Well, has to move south, and he doesn't even have the money to bring all his stuff with him. But finally, he survived, and he's landed at St. Andrews in Fort Worth, which is the a great, it's the evangelical parish mm -hmm. in that diocese. Well, and it's a, they're going to pay him a, a nice, wonderful wage. Uh, he won't have to survive on Canadian wages. Uh, even a bishop up in Canada makes very little money. So uh, hopefully he can recover and find a, a wonderful ministry for himself uh, down in, in Texas. We, we wish him the best. Uh, but, you know, we're talking about how much hypocrisy there is in Canada. I remember when a Canadian bishop sued a blogger. Remember that? Yes, yes. Uh, the bishop of Michael Bird, bishop mm -hmm. of uh, Niagara, yep. which is that bit of Ontario that Beautiful. sticks over to Niagara Falls, <laughs> yes. which is one of the most fastest declining dioceses in the Anglican world. I mean, he's gave Jack Spung a wrong from, run for money for being grossly incompetent, passionately insensitive. Well, this, this blogger uh, it was two, three years ago, basically put up little things comparing uh, Michael Berg to uh, uh, Kim uh, Kim Jong, uh, whichever Kim is Kim. Yeah, Kim, uh, Kim. I think it was the Kim before this Kim. Uh, Kim Jong. Yeah, sorry. Well, he, he basically did silly cut and paste photos that you know that were ha ha. They weren't like earth shatteringly awful. This guy sued yeah. for defamation of character. Yeah. Now, I would have loved to have gone to the trial because I would have gone, called Kim Jong-il and put him up against Michael Byrd, and Michael Byrd would have come out the loser as the man with the lesser. This was an insult to Kim Jong-il, not to Michael Byrd. Well, it's amazing because Canada has different laws uh, for press and uh, freedom of speech than we have here in America. Here in America, you're allowed to do parody, you're allowed to do lots of stuff without climbing into the copyright lawsuits um, or the defamation okay. lawsuits. If you're a public person, trump on down, you can be uh, pretty much ridiculed and uh, defamed without 
uh, just cause to go to a criminal court or civil court. Not only do we have different laws, we have to, so, the culture is so very different. Canada is conformity central. Um, it's very, very, you know, an independent, free-thinking Canadian is an oxymoron. So when you've got one like the blogger who is, he goes by a Anglican Samizdat, who raises sharp issues, who raises questions as to competence and priestly vocation of a bishop, the Canadian mindset is, oh my goodness, you're rocking the boat. Oh, oh boot, or whatever the hell they say, <laughs> I, I don't know. know. What they say. <laughs> Uh, and so they basically, not only they do the laws gang up on people, the culture gangs up on people. Mm. Uh, well, I don't have much use for Canada, excuse me, I'm no, sorry. Right. Kevin, you'll, you'll, I'm, I'm sick, I've got delirium I, fever, you'll edit out the stupid things I say. Well, listen, if you get booted and they don't give you a visa next time you want to go to Canada, this episode is the reason why, George. Um, let's talk about George Carey. I remember last fall, last summer, you sent me a text going, you're not going to believe this. Justin Welby has just taken away the license of Archbishop, former Archbishop of Canterbury, George Carey. He could not, no longer give sermons, uh, give the Eucharist, perform marriages or anything in the Church of England. I said, why? <laughs> I don't understand. And you were at the time like, it, it, it can't, you know, obviously it can't be George Carey. It must be some payback or something like that. Nobody knew the reason and uh, uh, Lambeth was quiet. They wouldn't say the reason, but apparently they were sitting on six letters. And the six letters were about uh, Bishop Peter Ball and some of the extremely horrid, uh, unthinkable things he did in the presence of minors uh, or had minors do in his presence and uh, George Carey from everything I can see and in my humble lay opinion dropped the ball on this severely dropped the ball on this to the point where I we're watching testimony now the attorneys are you know almost threatening to put him in jail uh, and I'm like you know wow now this is gonna be a great lesson for the church um, but no, it's not. No, it's not. No, oh, it's I hope not. it is. Well, no, it's not. It's not a lesson for the ACNA because they're already doing it right. Um, but I would hope this would be a lesson for the Church of England. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll grant you that for the wider universal Catholic small C Church small okay. C. Yes, it's a lesson Good. for the Church of England. No, <laughs> no. no not in the least, <laughs> because you know uh, Johnson Tamu has done just as much, if not worse, than George Carey. And but Johnson Tomo has excuse. Oh my! There was a flood, and all the records for that year, 1514 was safe and dry, but 2014. Oh my goodness! The floodwaters reached it. Uh, the the George Carey is the sacrificial lamb. No, no, two issues here. Did George Carey screwed up? Yes, yes he, he did. did. It, you know, Second, it, did he screw up maliciously? No, he didn't. He just screwed up. He did not believe the accusers because for whatever reason in George Carey's head, he was inclined to believe the person who was in front of him who said, I didn't do it. Mistake. Church of England, meanwhile, under Justin Welby, is seeking uh, scapegoats. It's seeking to sacrifice people to say, look, what a wonderful job we're doing on safeguarding without actually doing anything. So they're now spending millions of dollars and with committees and bureaucracy. And the problem is not that parish wardens don't know about abuse, that clergy don't know it's wrong. The problem has always been the fact that bishops are loath to do anything or they pass the buck or they deny it or they cover it up. Now, this is not just a Church of England problem. This is an Episcopal problem. Kevin, one of the show stories we did about five, six years ago was how Catherine Jefford Shorey when she was Bishop of Nevada, licensed a pedophile who had been kicked out of the Catholic Church of the priesthood there. Mm -hmm. Actually, he was a religious. He was kicked out of one of the orders. The orders, that's right. And, and he went over to, and he moved to Las Vegas, became an organist, and Jeffrey Shorey may have been an Episcopal priest, even though he had all Quite these the record. things. Yes, he had, he had a record. And why? Well, she felt sorry for him. Mm -hmm. It's the same mistake George Carey made with Peter Ball. It's the same mistake Jeffrey Shorey made with this fellow who died, uh, so, who has subsequently died. Now, do I think Catherine Jeffrey Shorey is malicious in this case? No. Do I think George Carey is malicious? No. 
I think they're both extraordinarily arrogant because they believe that God has somehow given them this extraordinary wisdom to be able to divine into the souls of other people rather than apply the system as it should work. <sighs> but uh, now, in reality, back in the, the 80s, some of this, even though we're watching you know, the self-destruction of the, the church in Rome, uh, was kind of unfathomable. You know, why would this happen within a church that allows for marriage for priests? Um, you, we were blaming, you know, the, the celibacy orders for the Roman Catholic destruction. Um, there was no, just no understanding of, you know, what a Peter Ball could do and did. Well, my uh, personal knowledge here, my mother is a psychologist, mm -hmm. and, she tra and she did all of her training and work, and she once... Uh, it, she was the chief psychologist for the Kansas State Prison for the Mentally Insane. She basically worked with perverts and sex offenders and pedophiles and this and that. Uh, so lovely dinnertime conversation at Thanksgiving I'm and Christmas. Sure. And part of her training was she worked at the uh, Catholic facility outside of Philadelphia where they would send their, the priests that they caught doing abusing and molesting. And the, the things that my mother would share with me is that this has nothing to do with celibacy. This has nothing to do with the fact that they can't marry. This has everything to do with the fact that they're screwed up. They're wiring inside their brains, whether it's biochemical or whether it's learned behavior. It has very little to do, you know, just if you make, have women priests or make them married, you're not going to stop the abuse epidemic. And so that's why when we have abuse in the Episcopal Church, some of these people are married men and they're abusing little boys. It's not because uh, that they couldn't get married that they do this. They are sick. And the church has a very bad habit of ignoring, passing along, blaming uh, the victim, believing the believing. Oh, Fred, he couldn't possibly do this. It's Fred. There's no way. And yeah. I know. You know, Kevin. We in our covering of the Episcopal Church's House of Bishops, uh, we've reported on a bishop who was uh, canned for being a pedophile. Uh, sleeping with teenage boys, the Bishop of uh, Navajo land. We've reported on criminal bishops. We've reported on crooked bishops, uh, you know, theft. We've reported on bishops who were just out and out plain jackasses, John Bruno. And for and I think the thing that it surprises me for George Carey to say, well, I can't believe a bishop would do this. Friends, what? there's no magic. <laughs> no. There's no magic in putting on a purple shirt. You're not a higher order of human being. Um, uh, although you are called to be above reproach, uh, I think they threw that rule we're out. We're all called to be above reproach, uh, Kevin. I, I don't know. It just, it just it, they threw that rule out for bishops a long time ago. Well, it's a necessary evil, I think, but that's a different show. Uh, the episcopacy is a necessary evil, but we won't get into that too much. Well, let's move on and talk about the current presiding bishop of the church that used to be called the Episcopal Church. Uh, the, the, there's no longer bishops in charge. So I thought we would talk about Michael Curry, who we need to keep in our prayers. He has a health concern. He was diagnosed with prostate cancer. The doctor said we need to you know, take it out. Uh, you're going to have some downtime, obviously, and uh, time away from work. Understandable. Lots of people uh, who are famous have had this surgery. I have a good friend who had it, uh, and he, full recovery. Um, however, keep them in your prayers. But when I saw the story, I'm like, if he doesn't make it or has to retire or dies or has to step down for health reasons, what on earth is going to happen to the remaining conservative bishops in the Episcopal Church. He is the one uh, person who's protecting them, George. Yes, yes. Um, the man or the woman at the top does make a difference sometimes. Mm -hmm. Michael Curry has gone out of his way to seek an accommodation between all parties. He is, dem he is complete opposite of Catherine Jeffrey Shorey in this way. Catherine Jeffrey Shorey is a partisan who sought to win at all costs and took no prisoners. Curry is saying, look, this is that, we're not doing that anymore. We need to find a way where we can all get along. And I, even though we've got crazies in the House of Deputies who are making all these calls, I'm going to run interference until we find a way that we can all settle this down. Michael Curry is replaced by somebody 
crazy. Uh, KJ, KJS2, if you will. Yeah. Uh, then all bets are off as to the survival of the current system. Mm -hmm. And that's that's interesting. I mean, we knew right away when Catherine Jeffert Shorey was uh, appointed after Frank Griswold that she was going to do things completely differently. And she, I don't know, I she had an agenda, but her agenda was uh, we're going to do what the House of Deputy wants to do uh, up to a point. But then there was a war between her and the head of uh, the House of Deputies towards the end. Um, it was hard to follow her 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 news making, but. Uh, it was a war against the conservatives, which I don't see Curry doing. Um, so, for you know many reasons, pray for his health and full recovery. George, I do want to you know, praise God that you're back and you're feeling better. Um, hopefully, you have the energy for next week's show. And, and now, when do you return to work? Uh, I've been going in for an hour or two after mm -hmm. everybody leaves in the afternoon to get through paperwork. Sure. God, I can't take my secretary. I'm going to throttle her, you know. Uh, we'll color flowers this Sunday. I don't care, you know. So I'm trying to work into back into it. I'll be preaching this weekend. Good. I've got five sermons and a class on Exodus 3. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. All right. Do keep George in your prayers. Keep Gavin in your prayers. Uh, keep Anglican Unscripted and Anglican TV in your prayers and our families uh, too. Uh, this this uh, ministry is not beyond the desire for destruction by the enemy. I'm Kevin Coulson. And I'm George Conger, and you've been watching episode 424 of Anglican Unscripted. He meant 423, but yeah, he, this week you're forgiven. You know you're absolutely forgiven. Not a big deal. <laughs>